Remember that cartoon that got cancelled? Let's bring it back. What could go wrong? Everything. These are my top 10 worst animated revivals, reboots, basically anything that came back in animated form. GT. Just no live action remakes or animes. This list already has enough contenders. It's juice and jam time. Why the hell do you have to be so critical? I'm a critic. No, your job is to rate movies on a scale from good to excellent. What if I don't like them? That's what good's for. Hey, it's that guy who was on The Simpsons that one time. Jay Sherman from The Critic. It's among the best forgotten animated sitcoms of the 90s about a movie critic's life living in the city working at a TV station. Like Family Guy, it's littered with cutaway gags parodying current films of the time, which thankfully, much of these films are still remembered as classics so the jokes hold up. Also, the cutaway gags are just footage of the films Jay is reviewing, so they actually fit into the story. Tonight, I'll be reviewing Home Alone 5. We left Kevin home alone, and he's only 23! Ah! The critic, as great as it was, moved from network to network struggling to stay on the air until cancellation. But in the year 2000, internet brought this new distribution frontier as the critic returned. Al Gore invents internet? New technology? Last hope for fading stars? Baby, I'm back! And here I am. Well, this revival didn't involve full episodes, just animated shorts done in an early grade of Macromedia Flash. The critic was reduced to cutaway gags while never venturing beyond his TV studio job. It was a valiant effort, but the internet wasn't profitable enough to be so ambitious. If the critic was made this generation, it probably could have been revived on Netflix. Well, I hated this movie, but I'm just a pesky little gnat gnawing away at a film that's grossed $250 million. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Imagine the Looney Tunes had sex and gave birth to children, and their children had children who were mutated after a meteor hit Earth, so they became the Lunatics Unleashed. What's up, Doc? I am gonna. Gonna what? Go to a Viking convention at the Civic Center? No, we're here to take over your world. This freaking happened. I'm sorry to bring this up so much, but this was such a weird idea making an action show out of the comedy-based Looney Tunes. Comparing this to the Looney Tunes, Lunatics was just, what? But as its own thing, you can get some enjoyment out of. Oh yeah, like that's ever gonna happen. <laughs> It was the early 2000s, everybody was trying to be an action anime inspired show. This is the polar opposite of Teen Titans Go, which guess what's next on this top 10? <laughs> Teen Titans Go! Fuck yourselves! You get an action cartoon, cancel it, turn it into a comedy. Damn. Honestly, I like Teen Titans Go. It appeals to my sadistic sense of humor. And my girl Raven and Jonks are just as sexy as ever. Big heads and little bodies, hell yeah. They can stab me and stick their fingers in my wound if you catch my Tokyo Drift. Once again, it's a reboot different enough you can appreciate it as its own separate thing, but I understand all the hatred Teen Titans Go gets. Right now, where are all the action cartoons? It's not a show that we need right now, when everything's a comedy except for maybe like a Star Wars cartoon and a few Marvel shows and that's it. No one asked for this. Those apples are supposed to be mine, you dumb horse. But I'm not worried. This is a superhero property. You'll hate it now, but in a few years, we'll get another Teen Titans reboot just like we get a new X-Men, Batman, Spider-Man cartoon. Just recently, we got the straight-to-video movie Justice League vs. Teen Titans. I'm the entire animal kingdom, crammed into a single magnificent specimen. You're something crammed into something. Granted, the name is very much clickbait as they don't really fight, and the story was so cluttered, but it's a fun movie in terms of character interactions. If it sells really well, I'm sure we're gonna get more straight-to-video movies like this. For now, just Teen Titans go with it. <sighs> I accept your challenge, Omi. Let's go. 
Shouting Showdown! Shallon Showdown was my shit. Oh no, and there was my shit. Whoops. Oh no. Oh no. This is a mess. Shallon Showdown, you got these karate kids bending the four elements or whatever. Earth, water, fire, air, fire. It's not a ripoff of Avatar, it's totally different, okay? Shut up. Shallon Showdown had, I feel, a complete run. But to my surprise, we got a reboot, a sequel series, a separate series. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Shaolin Chronicles. What's only for Dequas? What in tarnation is he gone now? <laughs> he needs to go to the little warrior's room. It's kind of like the old show, like a continuation. Except due to licensing issues being made by a different studio, they had to change a lot of the voices, names of the Shengan Wu weapons and designs. The battle switched to this CGI Tron style. Why? They dumbed down the villains and added a smaller version of the main character whose element was wood? You've excelled expediently. It's quite clear to me who will be my choice of apprentice. Why add a clone character? What is this? Super Smash Brothers Melee? I I'd rather they add Jermaine from New York or anyone else to the main team. Let's take a look at all the reboots of X-Men or Ninja Turtles. Sure, you may not like them equally, but you can respect them as their own separate takes on the franchise. But Shaolin Chronicles can't separate itself from Shaolin Showdown. It's not the old show, and it's not its own thing. It's a reboot? A continuation? I, I don't know. It's a mess. Idiot! I want my monkey's bear back! Scooby-Doo. It's enough. Just stop. Sugar, spice, and oh. The reboot doesn't do that anymore. Powerpuff Girls 2016 at first feels like the old show, but you eventually realize they managed to screw up everything. Trouble! Let's go, Bubbles! But what about Buttercup? She'll be there! The main joke about Powerpuff Girls is that it's cutesy soft girls in a sharp pointy rough world full of threatening villains. But the reboot is cutesy soft girls in a cutesy soft world full of cutesy soft villains. Where's the contrast? Remember all the violence in the old show? Well, they chose to rarely show the impacts anymore. And according to this interview in the LA Times, Miss Bellum was removed for being too offensive. To who? Nobody ever complained about Miss Bellum, what the fuck? To compensate, the show now has less crime fighting and instead has morals and bonding, character driving, yeah. It's Powerpuff Girls neutered, but it also has jokes you've already heard in other cartoons. It's true. I was being <laughs> a horrible buttzilla. Now say I'm a buttzilla. I'm a buttzilla. <laughs> You're a buttzilla. I think we got some tough times ahead of us. Tough times. Trench broken. Excitement, excitement, excitement. Skate, skate. There's episodes that are remakes of the original Powerpuff, like you can't help but compare and see how generic it is. Remember the one where Buttercup joins a gang? Well, the cool thing about the gang Green Gang in the original, as opposed to the new Roller Derby Gang, is they didn't copy and paste the same character over. Remember two weeks ago when I made that Mojo meme generator? The entire art style, as well as the show itself, ranges from meh to insulting. I plan on doing a big ass analysis video explaining what went wrong. It's not bad because it's different. It's bad because it tries to recreate the old show and does average while anything new it does falls flat. Like Shaolin Chronicles, everything done here could have been done better in the old show. It's a reboot that can't stand separate. It has nothing unique to offer besides shoving in smartphones, twerking, and lingo that'll be outdated in a few years. It has the soul of a shitty ass Hollywood live action adaption. OMG! Yes! You do it! No, my goose stop! Little girls that can fly and zip through the air? Why, that's crazy talk. Or is it? The Powerpuff Girls will return. <laughs>
The greatest animated adaption of Sega's mascot was Sonic Satyam, a more serious but still fun take on the games, remembered fondly but cancelled too soon after being placed on competing time slots against the ultra popular Mighty Morphing Power Rangers. Sonic Sat AM ended on a cliffhanger, but years onward, we got a new series. A series that recycled much of the designs of Sat AM. It makes you think, this will be a continuation, right? No! It's a whole new, awful, awful continuity. This time, Sonic has a brother and sister who were separated at birth and joined together and played in a rock band. Yeah, Sonic Underground. Juice and jam time. The worst Sonic cartoon. If you ever wanted to hear the blue blur sing, you got it here. He's still voiced by the one true Sonic, Julia White, but for his singing voice, they got double D. There's something missing, something's not quite right, and I can feel it calling to me every night. Every episode has to have a song. What do they think this is? Penis and Perv, this truly was the worst Sonic cartoon. Even if you weren't alive back then, you'd recognize Tex Avery's work somewhere. Often credited for the creation of Bugs Bunny, he is the embodiment of classic WB and MGM cartoons. Around the 90s, someone pondered, Walt Disney's name can be turned into a soulless brand, so why not Tex Avery? Here is where we got the wacky world of Tex Avery. <laughs> This is a reboot of somebody's legacy. I guess digging up his corpse and sticking electrodes into his neck would have been too classy. Their first mistake was attempting to recreate the humor and charm of those theatrical shorts on a TV show budget. The animation is either too chaotic or too floaty all the time. Now, can you recall all the gross out jokes in those classic Avery shorts? No? Well, apparently, da 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 da. Dick Animation felt this needed to keep up with the 90s post run and stimpy Animaniac style. It comes off as a poor imitation. I'm challenging you all to a cringe off. Watch the intro to the wacky world of Tech Savory without cringing in shame. You can't. It's that awful. <laughs> If your reboot involves taking place in the future or space, you have run out of ideas. Except Batman Beyond, that was a great show. You're pretty strong for some clown who thinks he's Batman. I am Batman. <laughs> Let's list all the cartoons in this category. Tired of Gilligan's Island? How about Gilligan's Planet? Look, the Fawns from Happy Days. Now he has a time machine. Talk about crappy days. Recuerdas Zorro? Aurora tenemos Zorro. Generation Z. I'm Hispanic and my Spanish is shit. Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century. The title is done in Microsoft Word Art. Are you kidding me? Ninja Turtles fast forward into a brick wall. <laughs> My name is Juan. In space, no Juan can hear you scream. In the world of Lego Chima, the lions guard the golden sheep, but the crocodiles move in to steal it. Legends of Chima. No one's being fooled here. This is Lego Thundercats. Just compare the two. A Warner Brothers produced cartoon about a lion creature who is forced into maturing into adulthood. Today, you stop acting like a little cub and become a true lion. Huh? 
The sword is ready, Lionel, but you are not. He's got a magic sword and iron claws. There's a society of cats fighting against lizards and fear technology. Yeah, this is Thundercats. It's not a ripoff, it's a repackaging. We know what this is, Warner Brothers. Just admit it. As one of Nickelodeon's first Nicktoons, Ren and Stimpy really pushed the boundaries, but could only go so far in their crude humor. After the series ended, a revival brought it back to Spike TV, the first network for men. Retooled for an older audience, we got Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon. It's the same show, now way more in your face and no holding back. I know! I guess I'll bend over and pick it up. <laughs> It lasted six episodes, and it was shit. I'm no expert, but here's how I think comedy works. Disgusting is not the same as funny. Funny stuff equals funny. Funny stuff that also happens to be gross equals funny. <laughs> The problem was, Adult Party Cartoon was more concerned with being outrageous than actually doing anything funny. This show is your typical middle schooler trying really hard to be offensive online. I've said this before, but don't make anything disgusting or offensive. Make something that's funny, and if it happens to be disgusting or offensive, then so be it. Before we get to number one, here are some honorable mentions that did not make the list for whatever reason. Feel free to name the ones I missed. Yo, Yogi! Look out, bro! This ain't your daddy's Yogi Bear! Remember that old fuck that used to steal picnic baskets in the woods? Now he's solving mysteries in the mall as a teenager during the 90s. Yeah, fascinating facts, Max, but we've gotta make tracks! Yo, Yogi is the prime example of a reboot desperate to keep up with what's cool. The classic Yogi is simple, it doesn't look specific to any generation, while Yo, Yogi just reeks of early 90s. What was trendy then is now a punchline for us today. Any sort of extreme parody you see on TV nowadays owes everything to the likes of Yo Yogi. Hey, take a chill pill. Those grow on trees here. You stay out of this, Dippy Fresh! Much like the 2016 Powerpuff Girls, this reboot is trying too hard to be hip with the kids. Yo Yogi wasn't very popular, but it doesn't stop executives from making the same mistake with future reimaginings. Like, I'm not really into trees, you know, all that Echo Save the Nut whole stuff is so totally Boring. And those were my top 10 worst animated reboots. Do you agree with our list? If not, go fuck yourself. I'm Pan Pizza for Watch Mojo, telling you all to suck my dick, bitch. Cartoon Network presents Starfire. You must be my friends. Cyborg. Oh yeah, back in the lead. Beast Boy. Yo, whose turn to do dishes? Raven. This party is pointless. And Robin. Loser. Jerk. What did you say? In a new series about fighting for truth, justice, and the last slice of pizza. Teen Titans. Premiere Saturday, July 19th at 9. Only on Cartoon Network.